Yo, what's going on bros? Glad to see you back here for another episode. Today I'm going to show you everything that I did to get this M104 head all cleaned up. Uh, along with some areas that should be ported out on this for optimal flow. Uh, I'm not going to do any porting in this episode however. That is going to be in the next episode. So definitely subscribe if you have not so you can stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, let's jump right into this. Go back, 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 back. Let's start off with some before pictures so that we can see what we're working with here. So if you look on the left side, the exhaust side, you can see in the main portion of the picture, I've scratched away some of the carbon. That's just to kind of see what we're, uh, what we're working with. And if you look behind the exhaust side valve seats, um, you can see there's a little bit of a shadow being cast right there. Uh, and if you contrast that to the intake side, you can see there's actually been a little bit of machine work done right there. Um, whereas on the exhaust side, there's no machine work at all. It's just the seat pressed in. Then taking a look at the exhaust ports from the back side, you can tell that the center divider is pretty monstrous and it rounds off really quickly between the two ports and so it creates a pretty big uh, flat spot for the exhaust to come out and, and create turbulent flow right there. Um, so that's one thing that we want to take a look at and possibly work on later and then there's also some other things in here that we'll take a look at later too once this is cleaned. I start off by giving this thing a good once over just uh, taking a look at everything and then I use a pick to pick out any you know large debris like dirt or bugs or anything like that that might be still cramped inside of the head. Then I take out the exhaust studs using the good old nut on nut technique and I sprayed these down with WD-40 just to try to get some oil in there to penetrate so I don't accidentally rip out any threads. Although I doubt I will, just to be careful though. Once I had all the exhaust studs out, I filled a plastic container full of diesel. Uh, I don't know what this container is made out of, but you probably recognize this container. It's, you know, you can find it at Walmart or wherever else there are containers like this. So anyways, I rinsed off the head as best I could with diesel, made sure to get everything inside of all the nooks and crannies, and then I let it soak overnight. After this sat overnight, I then took a toothbrush and nylon brush and got everywhere I could fit my brushes to clean everything as best I could. Then I took a drill of some kind and I used both nylon and brass cylindrical brushes to clean out every single hole with threads, every hole without threads, any hole anywhere that has been drilled I went through with a cylindrical brush. Brass really shouldn't damage anything. I just wouldn't try to cram a huge brass brush into like, you know, the valve guides or something because you might scratch it or remove some material. Just fit the brush to the size and then you'll be fine. I think you could probably use brass on this entire thing without damaging anything. And finally, on to the most labor intensive portion of this, the Dremel. So I used a Dremel to clean all of the carbon out of everywhere. Uh, I used the entire time steel wire wheels and I wasn't careful and I didn't damage anything. Your arbor, the piece that tightens your uh, the bits into the Dremel, it's it's gonna touch stuff here and there. It's not a big deal. I mean if you hold it and press you know it might remove material and you might have to fix something but for the most part you're gonna be just fine going through this entire thing you know every once in a while you're gonna hear a buzz you know smack whatever and it's not a big deal you're not gonna hurt anything I've already done this on on another head too and I wasn't careful on it either just using this uh, steel wire wheel and just go through and just clean all the carbon out until it's hundred percent good to go and a tip while doing this is to rinse frequently um, I found that if you let the carbon sit for like over 30 seconds, it would re-adhere to the aluminum and that was really annoying. And I found out that it was just because uh, I just wasn't rinsing it often enough. So you want to run through one cylinder real quick and then rinse and then look where you need to keep going. Then run through it again and then rinse and then run through it again and rinse until it's nice and clean and then go to the next one. 
And don't forget, this doesn't have to be 100% perfect. We just want to remove the bulk of all of the carbon, because me personally, I'm going to run through this thing, some sandpaper and stuff on the end of my Dremel so that I can pour it out very lightly. Uh, really just remove material. I'm not going to polish it or anything like that. I just want, need to remove a little bit of material here and there, so I don't need this to be perfect. But do keep in mind that we're going to be going through this multiple other times, and eventually we're going to be putting all the valves back in and then resealing the valves. Even though the valve seats on this look really good, I'm still going to reseal them because we're doing all this work on it. And especially with the sandpaper, um, I'm certainly going to hit the valve seats here and there. It's inevitable. You just got to make sure that when you put everything back together, everything seals right and you're good to go. And finally, once I was done, I rinsed this thing uh, as best as I could inside of my little uh, diesel basin, and then I set it over to drip dry, and then took some compressed air and kind of just blew this thing out just to get all the drops of diesel off so that I could handle it better. Uh, and then I took a paper towel and ran through it with a paper towel too. <laughs> So I'm very satisfied with the end result. This came out really nice and it's going to work really good for this build. Um, but one thing to keep in mind, and you can see right here, the valve seats, you can see there's a little bit of a gap behind them. We're going to have to take care of that. And you can see in here, I focus right here too. This isn't perfect, you know, it's not 100% clean. I'm still going to go through here with sandpaper too, so any leftover carbon is going to get cleaned out. Um, but yeah, these, these center dividers too for the exhaust are really thick. And I'll contrast them to something else here in a minute. We'll look at the combustion chambers too. It looked really nice and clean. Really came out really nice. I'm very satisfied with it. So here's a really good look at the valve seat on the exhaust side. You can see that my pick, it's getting stuck right there and you can kind of see how much of my pick is, is stuck in. It's not the greatest demonstration, but you can see definitely 100% if there's a, a, a gap, there's a lip. Yeah, you, you can see that a little bit better there. Even the shadows being cast back behind. And like I said before, the exhaust divider right here is just monstrous. It's insane. And we're going to probably have to take care of some of this area here where the exhaust manifold and gasket seats up. So in contrast, this is a Honda D15 head, D is in Delta. And this is the center divider from the factory on the exhaust. And this is after I worked it. And in both cases, it is significantly thinner than on the M104. And you can imagine how thin that is. That's going to cause very little turbulence. And so that's the goal for the M104 head. Hit that subscribe button if you want to be notified when I upload the video for porting this head. Also, leave a like and leave a comment if you like this video or if you have any questions or want to see anything else. Yeah, that's it for this one, guys. I'll see you next time.